All right. You want to do it? Let's do it. Oh, my my first line is hard. Hi, welcome to the F&T Show. I'm Turin. And I'm Fiona. And welcome to episode five, where today we're going to be talking about ghosts and creepy things. We're taking mm. a, of a different turn on this episode, but still applying the same... What could it have been trying to apply some like logical thoughts into our experiences? How was your weekend? It was good. It wasn't long enough. It never seems long enough. Saw some old friends for a barbecue. It was kind of nice on the weekend. So we got to have a barbecue and spend time with my kiddos and my husband. Mm-hmm. Got some stuff ready for camping. Oh, yeah. That's happening soon. More week. It was a yeah. really good weekend very chill mm-hmm. i didn't i didn't create as much as i wanted to but that's okay that happens mm-hmm. it, it does um one of my dream weekends i could live in the rink well i mean there's lots of things i like to do but it was away for the weekend four day weekend i know at tournament in new brunswick and my, yeah, my youngest daughter was in the ringette tournament, the Eastern Canadian ringette championships, playing for Team Nova Scotia, five games in three days. Wow. Yeah, all very close, competitive, very good ringette. There was all different age groups. She's an under 19, but under 14, under 16 was there. Stayed in a hotel, and besides the money that that costs, that's actually very fun. Um, and my mom came along for a road trip. Nice. Uh, and we were really, really close to the rink. So the schedule of a tournament can be very demanding. And normally we're like half an hour away from the rink and you have to be there an hour beforehand. So basically the whole, whoever's there has to leave and be gone from the hotel room the whole day, basically. We were literally a two minute drive from the rink. So, so back to the hotel and just chill. Yeah. So I could bring Sarah to the rink, drop her off, go back. So, um, and they're older, so they stay in a room by themselves, the the girls, teammates. Nice. So I'm not, a vi- I don't, like when she was younger, we had to basically, you know, be, uh, oh, what's the word? Losing words. But basically take care of every need. For a podcast. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Not good. <laughs> what are words? But I just had to get her some places if need be, but also the hotel was very close to Lots of amenities, so she would. They would go for a walk. Her and her teammates in the morning get. There was free breakfast at the hotel. Nice. Yeah, it was really, really good. Yeah, sounds like mm-hmm. your mom had fun. We did, and we, and of course, the playoffs are on. The Leafs play tonight. Yay. This is my Mitch Marner jersey. Woo. I actually <laughs> saw. We drove to Shuby, which is like a local park in our city. Uh, we went there yesterday, and I saw two jerseys hanging in the window of somebody's house. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, Yay. like we were driving, so I couldn't snap the picture. But I'm like, oh, Turin would have liked to see that. Yeah, I should have my flag here, my Maple Leafs flag behind me, but I don't have anywhere to Stick hang it. it for the backdrop. But mm-hmm. we should have given it to you. You could have used that instead of yeah. your goldie. I know, and I got some like pretty lights and shit. So we got yeah. some ghost stories to tell, huh? We're going to get down and start talking about some spooky get shit. Get down, get down, get down, jungle boogie. Wow, you really like to sing. Mm, some- not really. You sing but, a lot. Yeah, I do break out into song. <laughs> what happens? So you're, you were meant to be in a musical. Maybe we can write the f and musical. <laughs> Maybe I was in, in a former life, which we could do that episode. Um, do you believe in former lives? I don't know. I have. I would have no idea what my former life would have been. I would. That would be a Turin episode because I. Well, we, nothing. You could talk about former lives and if you believe that it's true, and if you've heard of anyone or read any stories of people. Some people. Some people seem to really know or have strong evidence that they were a certain person. I just have a feeling of possibly, and there's Penny. Every episode. As for the norm, there she is. Um, it's a penny. Um, yeah, of, you know, possible. Not certain people I was in a former life, but where I may have been or what may have gotten me. Yeah, I got nothing. Nothing. Maybe you're a new soul, which is why you're less angry. Oh, 
maybe. And maybe that's why I'm all butterflies. Now, my son, yeah. he's an old soul, Nicholas. I think he's very, um, very wise for an eight year old. Interesting. Um, and he's one of the ones that he has some interesting stuff here. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, like all my ghost stories or like creepy stories, I wouldn't really call them ghost stories, rotate around him. And oh, that's my cat's tail. Every uh, episode. So I guess my first story would be we have a rental unit next door to us. So we own the pole building, rent out the other side, and we were getting this new tenant in. And it was just a, a young girl by herself with her dogs. And when she came by to pick up the keys and drop off her rent checks, she came in our, our side of the house. And, you know, we were just kind of talking and stuff. And Nicholas at the time would have only have been three or maybe not even three, like maybe just turning three. Like he was really, really young and he came into the room and um, just kind of like was being Nicholas. He's very charming, very sociable. So it was just kind of like, you know, he talked to her, said hi to her, you know, being all cute and stuff. And then that was it. And then she left. And that was the only time that she laid eyes on Nicholas because it was like November, December. It was cold out. Mm -hmm. So then she moved in and everything was great. And then a couple months later, of course, it turns to springtime and we're outside and we're cleaning up the yard and we finally get to talk to her and kind of socialize with her, you know, over the back of the fence. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't, I can't even remember how it came up, but basically she was like, and I don't know if anybody believes in this stuff, but this is like, once again, my experience um, she said that she had abilities. She was psychic. Okay. Oh, cool. And that she could read like the future, like all like all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, you know, that's cool. Like I never really met anybody firsthand. Like, obviously, you know, you go to like you get your tarot cards read and all that stuff, but I'd never actually met somebody that claimed that they had like these abilities and stuff. And she's like, Yeah, she's like, Your son can see stuff. He's got the gift. And I'm like, no, I'm like, go away. Like, okay. <laughs> you know? Wow. And, like, once again, she's only ever met him once, and he was three, like, mm -hmm. so young. And um, she's like, no, he, he has the gift. He can see things that you and I can't, like, that you can't see, you know? So you should really, you know, just pay attention and and just watch him kind of thing, right? I'm like, okay. You know, kind of skeptical, like, oh, cool. That's, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So then as Nicholas got a little bit older, and he wasn't that much older, he he could talk. He'd be sitting at um, the breakfast table eating his breakfast and he'd start talking about these black floaty things. And I'm like, of course, oh. that makes me think of detached retina. What? <laughs> yeah, the black floaty. All the things. eye specialists are like, black floaty things are not good. Yeah. His retina was okay. He never got yeah. a soccer ball. Just teasing. Him. Yeah, you'll have to tell the listeners about that story sometime. I don't know. I'm just that's what it, other people may be thinking the same thing. Yeah, black floaty things. So anyway, <laughs> he just kept talking about these black floaty things and that they were coming to see him and that they scared him a little bit. And I'm like, well, what are they like? And of course, he's young, right? So kids have such an active imagination. So I'm like, were you dreaming? Or was it a shadow? Was it the cat moving in the dark? He's like, no, they look like a ninja star and they float above my bed. I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, are they nice things? Like, do they talk to you? Do they do anything? And he's like, no, they just float there. I'm like, okay, cool. And then uh, one time he woke up, I woke up in the middle of the night and to him yelling, mommy, mommy, mommy. So of course I jump out of bed. I thought something happened that he'd hurt himself or whatever. And I jump out of bed and the way that our house is like, there's our room and then the hallway and then his bedroom's at the bottom of the hallway. So I come flying out our door and run, flip the light on in the hall and run down the hall into his room. And he's like, mommy, mommy, it's the black floaty thing. It's a black floaty thing. You ran right through it. <laughs> that's scary <laughs> and by that point i had already reached his bed so i had already ran down the hallway and then he's like mommy just ran through it i'm like i ran through what he's like the black body thing i'm like oh my god and i'm looking in the hall and of course there's nothing there the hall 
the hall light was already on I think actually I didn't even have to turn it on so it wasn't like a shadow in the darkness or whatever it was just super creepy and then as he got older he doesn't talk about it too too much but just recently he brought the black floaty thing up and he said that it shows him that he said it's not bad it's not a bad ghost and he actually he likes it when the black floaty thing comes to visit him because it shows him all his memories from when he was younger when he was younger or younger what kind of memory younger well, like or said, former like we were life. just talking about a former life thing but yeah. i'm like are they good memories bad memories is like oh they're really good they're really good memories they're really good that. well do you remember any of them and he doesn't go i can't remember if he ever went into specifics because of course i'm fixated on like where where would he get that from like all of a sudden mm -hmm. this black floaty thing that he's talked about like multiple multiple times like this isn't just like a one-off thing he talked about them a lot when he was like little little like three four years old mm -hmm. and then this was only like maybe two or three years ago so he would have been six or seven so that's how long he's been talking about these black floaty things like i was thinking i was gonna have to come in and get like his room um you know what he the sage or whatever you know cleanse mm -hmm. or whatever because i was like mm -hmm. But wow you know he doesn't mind the black floaty things because they show him all his happy memories well that is good at least they're happy memories but i want to know more about these memories oh, well he says that the black floaty thing looks like a ninja star like when i asked him he actually drew it for me one time and he said <laughs> it looks like a ninja star Okay, so, and you referred to it as ghost, but it's just like a black floating ninja star. So it could be ghost, could be a thing, could be an alien thing. Who knows? I don't know. Anything. I don't know. But I mean, I wow. obviously haven't seen it. And then there was one time, this is like my last, or I guess I have one more story. That was my story. Um, There was one time he came into our bedroom. I think he was like, I don't think he was sick. I don't know if he was... He came into our bedroom for something completely unrelated and he was sleeping in our bed and we turned the light off. And of course, my husband and I were exhausted. You know, we have to go to work and you're dealing with a kid that doesn't want to go to sleep in their room. They want to sleep in your room. And so he was laying in our king size bed between us and we turned the light off and he was like laying on his back and we're getting all snuggled in. Right. And he's like, mom, mommy, he's like, do you see them? And I'm like, what? He's like, the red and blue lights on the ceiling. It's like, they're so beautiful. Do you see them? And I look at the ceiling, Trin, there was nothing on the ceiling. Like nothing. Like I was thinking that maybe like sirens went by or a mm. car or something, right? There was nothing. It was pitch black. And even my husband, who's like very big, not into ghosts or anything like that, even he rolled over and looked up at the ceiling. He's like, I don't see anything. And he's like, you don't see the red and blue flashing lights? It's like, they're so beautiful. <laughs> Can't go to sleep, creepy kid. <laughs> and he hadn't been asleep yet. Did you say he woke up or no? He, no one he was, was wide awake. Yet. He was wide awake. Like, it's not like he was like, mm -hmm. like he was up walking, he used the bathroom, talking to us because of course, Nicholas is a talker. You know how he likes to talk mm -hmm. even at like, you know, two o'clock in the morning, he's down for a conversation. But yeah, he's like, down for a conversation. he started talking about like these, um, red and blue like lights on the ceiling see now i gotta I have to google all this stuff black I ninja stars know. and i know blue and red lights and i know Creepy. things that bring you good memories bring to me yep i mean i'm down for remembering good memories but i don't know where mm -hmm. he gets i don't know i feel that we need to uh, interrogate nicholas about these memories Oh, he might tell you. I don't know. I don't know if he could remember, but no, he, that's true. Yeah. He might not. Yeah. He might just remember the feeling like that they're good memories, but he can't describe he's them. Like, yeah. And he's not scared of the black and it, it made him so that he wasn't scared of the black floaty thing because he was always scared of it. But then mm. when all of a sudden when it started showing him his memories, it wasn't so scary anymore. Right. Right. Now was am I misremembering? Was there one time he said something about white lights? Or yeah, there was one time that it went from black, black floaty things, and then there was white floaty things. White floaty things. And yeah. they were in his room too, I think. Mm -hmm. Or because you walked through a black floaty thing. Mm -hmm. 
not the white yeah so i don't know but there's always there are always floaty things for sure and mostly things. black yeah and mm -hmm. i'm like do they talk to you like do they say anything like wondering if it's like a family member that's passed it's just kind of like checking up on them or whatever right and he's like no oh the the white the people usually think of that as the color of ghosts but yeah. so the white floaty thing did he describe what that looked like no so that might that not have been my, that was when he was younger too mm -hmm. so maybe just didn't have the ability to describe it as well as he could when he got a little older right Creepy. wow yeah. yeah and very consistent over the years like not just mm -hmm. it's and not like you just like talk about it like he's not it's not like he even has to like try to remember what it was like he vividly remembers them even now wow. that he's older yep it's creepy hmm. I hope I don't see any floaty things tonight. Yeah, me neither. I've never seen floaty things, so I don't expect to. And if I am, it's probably a nightmare from this discussion. Well, I mean, the only experience that I've ever had, and it was actually fairly recently. I don't even know if I told you this, but. This is not sounding familiar. Um, What year is it? It's 2023. 2023. I'm like, what day is it? What year? Oh, is dear. It? Who's going to believe your story Man. now? When we had COVID, that was February of last year that we all had it, right? And we had to go into isolation yes. and that Nicholas brought it home. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we were in isolation because back then with COVID, you had to. Well, I guess you still should, but back then you actually no, you, had to. Yeah. It yeah. was like the rule. Um, I was in my bedroom and it was like two o'clock in the afternoon. It was a bright, sunny day. And I had like a little desk in my room that I use as a, a makeup slash writing table where I can set my laptop up. And, it, you know, the boys were all playing their video games all in their perspective places. So it was kind of quiet, like where I was. And um, I was working away and I was typing and I was writing I don't even think I had any music on or anything and Taran I swear to god it was the creepiest feeling ever I'm just like working away I'm immersed in my story I'm at a really good part all of a sudden I jumped like like just, just like I startled and I had to turn to my right and I swear to god it was like somebody was there like to the point where it startled me like I thought, and I had my door closed. The cat wasn't in the room. There was nothing. I was like, just standing, like sitting there and looking over and like, I had to reach my hand out because it felt like, yeah, like there was something there. Um, like that, that was probably like my one and only experience I ever had. And I'm like, is it my dad? Like it was so creepy because it, I wasn't even thinking about like anything. I was just writing my story. Oh. I was doing my thing. You know, nobody was bugging me. The cat wasn't even around me. And yeah, like, and I jumped. I just remember that, you know, that feeling you get when, like when, you, you know, when you fall down the stairs and you get like that jolt, like that belly drop and your heart kind of skips a beat. If That's how it felt. Like it was just a sudden jolt of. Mm -hmm. And then startled. Then that the fact that you felt it so much that you reached out to see, like, like you couldn't see anything, but. I'm like, what is that? Like, what is going on? And obviously nothing. It was creepy as hell. It was crazy. But that's I wonder what that I'm was. Mm. But it's funny that you speak of um just this feeling. Because mm. and it's as if we 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 rehearse this, but no, this is just naturally segueing into yeah. my story. Her turn. So, well, no, not my turn, but just this this part. If you have more, we can no, go back no, to that. But no. um, interesting, you should say that because I so much information to unpack here. But there's some kind of presence in the house. I lived in a couple different houses growing up, but the one I lived in since I was eight and that uh, up into adult adulthood um, that my parents still own has some kind of presence or something. And it's funny because it's mostly only, it's just a split entry and it's only in the basement that you feel this. And when my brothers were teenagers, they converted, we converted the family room where we used to play sock hockey and everything together <laughs> um, into their bedroom. 
And then I was in the bedroom down the hall downstairs. And so my parents were upstairs. So it's only mostly in the family room slash my brother's bedroom. And I want to say it only really started once they moved into the family room as the bedroom. Hmm. I'm trying to think about that. Anyway, it seems to be a presence. Something to do with my brother, Josh, my youngest brother. But that feeling that you're describing. You go into the house and you don't always feel it, but sometimes you'll just be downstairs and all of a sudden. Yeah. You're just like, I think I should go now. And like how just... many times would that happen? And you know, you don't even sometimes think about it frequently enough that you're, but you don't think of it when you go downstairs. Like I really don't think of it. And then, and you're just doing stuff. Like I, it's almost like I forget about it, but then all of a sudden I'll feel that feeling and then I'll be like, oh yeah. Oh, I, I think I should go now. And it's not a creepy, like I'm not scared, scared, but you're just like this feeling like, it's the whatever end just wants you to vacate this room mm-hmm. or at least go so you don't have to leave the house just mm-hmm. get out of that area and then you go upstairs and you're fine you don't have that feeling anymore and you're not scared and, and then, then maybe later you later. go downstairs and you don't have that feeling um but it's just this it's just weird it's just this feeling like i don't know like just just leave so why do you say it was attached to your brother well I think he was the first one to experience it. I have two brothers and the other one, Matthew, he, I don't know that he necessarily believes this stuff or not. And he, so he has less run-ins with it. I don't know if he has any specific stories of him hearing or seeing presence. Um, But a lot of people do and, and not even people that live in the house. So people who have come into the house have also experienced things. So I don't know. So I'll just tell you some of the stories. Yes. And my brother, Josh, was he was sick with scarlet fever and he was upstairs on the main floor sleeping on the living room couch. And it's a split entry. So it's like the living room and then the dining room and the kitchen. But it, before it was open concept, like we've since knocked down the walls, but they're they were all up there. So three separate rooms. With the entry ray, entryways to get into all of them, but connected. So Josh is upstairs on the couch and my mom and I, I think Matthew and my dad were not in the house. My mom and I are downstairs in the family room before it was their bedroom. Oh, so it did not start when they had the bedroom because it was before it was their bedroom. So we were watching TV in the family room before it was converted to their bedroom. Josh was upstairs on the couch and all of a sudden the loudest thud came from upstairs in the living room where Josh was and so loud and big and just one thud that we thought Josh fell off the couch and he wasn't feeling very well. So we thought something really bad happened. So we run up the stairs and we find Josh on the couch. His eyes are so wide and he's kind of frozen in terror on the couch thinking, what in the hell was that? And he no longer looks that sick because he's just like so scared. Oh, my God. And we're thinking now, what? That wasn't you? Which is good, but also now we're confused. Yeah. Well, we we went into, and I can't remember the exact objects, but we went into, so through the entryway into the kitchen. And so in the kitchen, you know, there's the stove and the table. And then next to it is the dining room table and the dining room. Mm -hmm. So an object, one was a cookie sheet, I'm pretty sure from the top of the stove and it was not hanging over. It was in the middle. Um, One might've been a glass of milk. Can't remember, but three separate objects, one from the kitchen table, one from the stove and one from the dining room table all fell onto the floor. We're on the floor and it it was only one thud. So they all hit at the exact same time and no windows were open. Not like there's no wind. There's like, why? No cat, no. No, no cat. Yeah, we had no. See, I don't know if we had, if I don't know if we had the dog, but I don't think the dog was there. And did, did the dog jump on the, if we did it, did it jump on it, it? This dog didn't jump on tables. We did have a dog. She comes into a story later, but yeah, no dog. That dog was also attached to my dad and I'm pretty sure he wasn't there. So if, if, if he wasn't there, he was out with my brother and the dog probably, but 
Yeah, yeah. I don't remember a dog. So, yeah. Like, weird. And they were objects that we knew where they were before they fell. So maybe one wasn't a glass of milk. See, bed. I just remember that we know that the objects came from this place, this place, this place, that they weren't hanging on the edge. And even if they were hanging on the edge, how'd they fall out at the same time? All three flop? at the same time. Like, it's not like there was three separate crashes. It was just one. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. So if you had heard three separate crashes, still a little suspect that three objects fell from three different places. But, you know, you're, you know, you want to explain it away. So you maybe, I don't know. But That's crazy. one object falls, obviously, you're thinking there's totally an explanation. But three, at the same time, from three different places, all fell into the same spot with one loud thud. That's creepy. That, and nothing was, like, that scared my brother who was right there. That's creepy. Well, that and was... he didn't see anything? No. He was just watching TV? I think he was sleeping, if I remember correctly. Because I don't, like, he just, he really didn't feel well. Mm. And I think that's why we were downstairs because like he doesn't sleep on the couch, but he must have fallen asleep up there. So we wow. just left him, right? He really didn't feel well. That's creepy. And he was up after that. Mm. Yeah, that was one story and that involved Josh. And again, I can't remember what order these happened in either. So I don't know if that was the first encounter, but uh, another creepy one is I believe she was his girlfriend at the time, now his wife. But Denise was having supper at this house in the dining room with, um, and I know I said the presence happens mostly downstairs in that room. Things have happened all over the house, but that's where you get that feeling. The yucky feeling. And where it feels like it kind of, I don't know if they live somewhere or if, you know, that's where it seems like it mostly happens, but then it must follow. This is also why I think it might be attached to Josh, like where he goes in the house, things happen. Ugh. Otherwise, you have to go down there and then you feel it. Does that make sense? So that's yeah. why I think it's him. And but anyway, um, I'm trying to think of because he lived, he he had a bedroom downstairs, not in the family room. I think most of the time. And then I moved down at some point beside him. And then eventually they moved to the family room. But I think Josh was always downstairs the majority of this time okay. as well. Anyway, Denise was over having dinner and they believe in their recollection, Josh and Denise say they think it was just my mom and dad. They were having supper. But uh, Denise said she kept hearing Josh's name being said, like whisper, like Josh, Josh, over and over, but whispered. Right. So that. And oh, what did she say? She said, like, all of a sudden she just mentioned hearing, like, what is whispering Josh's name? And my brother said something along the lines of like, thank you or you hear it too or something like that and that's what because he used to hear that all the time no. and so she's like what and then he, that is how she found out about this presence or whatever oh my god so she heard it too and yeah so he was any, kind of he didn't even have any she didn't even have any idea that it was happening no no clue like yeah i don't know why josh hadn't mentioned but so heard this and then finally it's like, you know, basically like that sucks. It's kind of scary, but also, yay. I'm not crazy. You know, this is, you know, I hear that all the time too. And oh that's gosh. another reason because says Josh's name never said my name in, 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 in its life. Right. Doesn't seem to brother, br bother my brother, Matthew. It bothers me a lot. Like it does things to me, but it never says my name. So the fact that it's like calling Josh, Josh, you know, that's really weird. That is creepy AF. Oh, yeah. And so I'm trying to like think, okay, obviously people are probably like, really? You have quite the imagination, but like, it's not just happening to me. I'm trying to explain all these things away. Like, what could that possibly be? They're at the supper table. Denise is not dreaming this. Josh is hearing it at that moment as well and has heard it before, but is not bothered to tell her. And only because she says this, now he's like, Hey, he tells her the stories that he has experienced thus far. So, like, isn't that crazy? Even like your brother, holy smokes! If some something was whispered out my name, I'd be like, I'm burning this house down. <laughs> oh yeah. my god! Well, but and it's weird because it it's scary, but not scary. Not the same as if I don't know you knew a, a human was in your house. And it doesn't seem like it's out to hurt anyone. Like we haven't had the experiences where we're like in fear. Um, 
for our lives or anything. Does that make sense? Like not, I guess like a whispering his name, like maybe just talking to him. I don't know. But then we don't know. Yeah. We don't know who this is or, you know, so, but we do call him Codge and we do think it's a boy and we call him Codge because my brother who I don't think he necessarily believes in this stuff or I shouldn't speak for him, but he's not sure about this Codge and he hasn't had much experience. So, I mean, without him being on here, I can't really say exactly where he stands and we haven't really, we, we haven't really spoken about it, like a, the whole spirit thing in general, but he did a Ouija board with his friends um, for fun, like his friends in high school. And they asked this presence what its name was. So everyone knows about this. So now they're trying to summon this 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 presence, find out more about, about him. Um, and of course, Ron, who I was dating at the time, I'm in the bedroom down the hall and we're listening to them you know, so what's your name? And I ask him all these questions. So Ron, who's pretty serious most of the time, tells me, slam the door. So I do, because that's funny. And the screams scared the poop out of them all. They were so scared. Oh. And that it was pretty funny. Ouija boards are sketchy AF too. My dad's a very, was a very logical man. He didn't really speak very much about like ghosts or anything like that. But I remember when I was like 13, 13, um, I was hanging out with these girls and they made this like makeshift Ouija board and they were like doing it out in the woods or whatever. And I was young. I was like 12 or 13, maybe. Anyway, that night I went home and I told my dad and he was so upset. He just looked at me and he was, well, he's not upset. He, but from my dad, he just looked at me. He's like, I don't want you ever touching one of those ever. And I'm like, why? Like, just to see, like, to see him react like that. And I'm mm. like, why? And he's like, just don't touch anything to do. Wow. Well, I'm like, I wonder okay. what experiences he had. I don't know. Well, he did die once is his story he what? was in a, he was in a mo- motorcycle accident when he was in his early 20s and i guess he actually died he he actually remembers it that he said he was walking down this hallway and at the end of the hallway there was two guys sitting at a table and they just kind of looked at him and said what are you doing here you're not supposed to be here yet and dad was like okay like i wasn't even alive well, me, myself, because my dad was only young and he's like, okay. And he's like, on you go, go back. And then he went back and what? obviously lived his life. So, uh, when he was dying of cancer, he just kept saying, he's like, no, it's not my time yet. It's not my time yet. It's not my time yet. When it's my time, I'll know. And hmm. then he went, huh? It was very weird. Yeah. So. That's probably the only experience I've ever heard him really talk about anything with ghosts. But yeah, he was really upset that he found out that I touched, even though it was a fake one. I think it was made out of like a box or something with just mm-hmm. like a marker with the alphabet written on it. Like it was nothing authentic, authentic right? Right. Kids, but anyway, so do you have more Still. ghosts? Well, no. Well, my brother and his friends were using this Ouija board. Yeah, the Ouija board. Yes. And again, I didn't get everyone's particulars from their story they've told me before but you know i can't remember my uh, you know fine details sometimes unless i write it down so i'm but what's most important is they were using this we scared them by slamming the door (laughs) but they did ask his name the ghost right and i can't remember if this was why we knew it was a he at this point again all of my memories i don't remember what order they happened but i'll i'll just keep telling them and it spelled out C A U J. We have no idea what that means. Why, f- like, if that is that the person's name, maybe two middle names, maybe a hyphenated last name, who knows? Um, and we just pronounce that Codge. So from here on out, we'll just refer to him as Codge. That's what we call him. So um, I just Googled it. C A U G is a J, I meant. Oh, J. Yeah. I think J. Yeah, J. C A U J. C A U J. I'm getting information on large commercial condensers. Well, when I describe this spirit to you, 
I don't think that's him. No. A compressor? Um, pardon? A compressor? Yeah, I don't <laughs> think. So, I do remember my brother, who's a little bit more skeptical. I do know this because I think he was kind of challenging the Ouija board. Oh, I should have gotten more information, but something about he asked it something and its answer was kill. I don't know what that means. What? If it was threatening to kill or if he say the ghost is saying he was killed or I don't know. But another thing they asked it, whatever it did, it did do the three initials, first, middle and last name of one of the girls that was there and then said sick. And she was sick. She didn't know it at the time, but she was sick. But she's okay now. But like, like seriously sick. Yeah. Wow. I don't want to divulge her information. No, 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 so that's no, why no. I look I mean, skeptical. Like, but like, yeah, was it a cold or was it like something? No, no, it was a yeah. Okay. Wow. But she's okay now. So yeah. So wow. Wow. That's intense. That's a little creepy. That is so creepy. So. Anyway, that's why we call it Codge. And I've already done the one where Josh is sick on the couch and the three objects fall. Yep. The Ouija board, the feeling that you just have to leave. But not in a scary way. Like, I don't, we don't know what would happen if we stayed and didn't listen to that, but you just don't want to. You're just like, no, right. Yeah. Yeah, you're just good. Um, but again, he's never done anything to hurt. Oh, yeah. And the, the voice, the Josh, the, it's all the time, Josh hearing his name all the time, but frequently. Um, and Denise also hearing it wow i don't think i want to go to your mom's house anymore so you know remember i said i'm always trying to figure out how these instances or these experiences can be explained away obviously a ouija board lots of people believe you can just push it to make it say whatever so that could be explained away although sick like who how who would know you know so but and i don't know did everyone there know her initials like her middle name i don't know well, they wouldn't know that she was sick, like, especially if she didn't even know. She either. didn't know. Yeah. So oh. we still don't know what kill is. Like, no one has been killed. No one's, no one committed a murder from that group. So I don't know what that was. Maybe it was him trying to say that he was killed. I don't know. Maybe so. it's in that basement. Um, but this one is my, there, the couch that was upstairs that my brother was uh, sleeping on. Mm hmm. I don't know how this connects to our ghost because I've seen an outline of him and I would describe him as, and that story will be later, but I would describe him as like a teenager. Like I want to say between 15 and 17 years old. Um, and you've seen him? Yeah, this is, that's one of the good stories. I'll, I'll tell that next, but so he's sitting on the, the, the couch upstairs and only on, so and it, I think it had four sections. You know how they have the cushions? So only on the one cushion, if you sat right there, all of a sudden you get this waft of cigar smoke smell. And no one in our family smoked cigars. It was my mom, myself, and one of my friends that was there. And they we were all sitting on the couch, but only the person that sat on that one cushion could smell it. And what? just because we were like, wait, what? So we all took a turn sitting one on that cushion, then beside, and then the other one beside them and beside them only could smell it on that cushion. And even once I got a whiff and knew I was trying to smell it, I, when I moved off that cushion and I could try as hard as I wanted to try to smell it and I couldn't, but as soon as I sat back on that cushion, I could smell it. Yeah, and so it's not like something was neurologically going on with my brain because all three of us had the same problem. Wow. Or the same it's right. We couldn't smell it on this cushion. We could smell it on this cushion. So was it definitely like a cigar smoke? It wasn't like cigarette smoke? Because your dad smoked, didn't he? Definitely not cigarette smoke. Like it had that sweet, like, and maybe I picture them. The smell reminded me of those ones. So maybe they're not cigar, but with that, the like peachy colored filter on the bottom. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Brown, that's what the smell reminded me of. Um, maybe my dad smoked those at one point, but he wasn't home and he wasn't smoking at the time. And it was only on this one cushion and there was nothing like it wasn't anywhere else. Just you had to be sitting. You couldn't even stand there. You had to be sitting on this cushion. Wow. 
Isn't that weird? Um, like, so we, you couldn't so even stand weird. by it and smell it. You had to be uh, sitting. So almost, I guess, like as if the spirit was sitting smoking. And if you did that, you were doing that maybe. I don't know. But I don't know what that have to, would have to do with a 15 or 17 year old boy. But I'm just putting that out there because I don't understand any of it. And there's like so many experiences, so I'm not going to bore you with all of them, but with a lot of them, because they're all very good. Your stories are way better than mine. Just throwing no, that I'm out. But, well, I experienced them, not a three, right? Like Nicholas can only tell you so much and um, they're different. And also very, how do you explain them? Yeah. The memory thing is still weird. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, keep going. I want to hear more. Okay, well, so the the seeing this 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 lodge, yes. Um, so by this point, my brothers are sharing that bedroom, but they're away for hockey or something. So I have two of my friends sleeping over, and I'm sleeping in Josh's bed. Oh God, Josh! And so the beds are here, and then there's a couch, um, with its back facing the end of the beds. And kind of separated away, but because they kind of had it divided, like with watching TV on that side of the room yeah. and the bed. So, but the back of the couch is facing. And it's no secret that I'm a little nervous. I listen to some true crime. So sometimes I have nightmares about, and everyone makes fun that I always think there's a murderer out lurking around. Or so, you know, if I hear any noises or whatever, like I'm, I'm, I get kind of scared sometimes. So that's no, no secret. So I wake up. I'm sure I was awake. Like, you know, sometimes you're you're dreaming. So I, I wake up in the middle of the night. And on the back of the couch, I see what looks like a 15 to 17 year old boy. He has a toque on with one of those pom poms mm -hmm. on the back or mm -hmm. a beanie for the American listeners with a, the fluffy pom pom. We call mm -hmm. them toques here in Canada. And some, but the winter hat that a lot of hockey teams would wear. Mm -hmm. right and then and then like a sports coat like it had a hood but it was a thicker winter coat um but it reminded me of the sports jackets that teams would wear as well um that's just what it reminded me of i'm not i don't know if it had anything to do with hockey but oh. that's an attempt and um like with the buttons it wasn't a zipper so it buttoned like this down the front and yeah. it was a little bit like longer and it looked very comfortable um but so he seemed to be dressed for winter Anyway, that's what it looked like was sitting there. So, of course, murderers, I that would scare the bejesus out of me. Yeah, of course. But at first, I'm panicked. Like, someone, a, mur a murderer's in the house. Like, so, like, that's everyone's worst fear come true, I'm sure. But then I'm trying not to freak out. And then I'm looking. And as I look, what was more just like a shadowy thing becomes clearer and clearer but darker and darker. So very much defined outline, more and more looking like a human, but dark. So I can't see any features or anything, just the outline. So again, then I don't know how I knew he had buttons. Maybe that's just what went in my mind, but definitely the outline of a hood, definitely the outline of a toque with the pom pom on top. Yeah. And just, so I don't know, maybe I didn't see and buttons. He just disappeared? Oh, no, he didn't disappear. So the more I looked, the more clear it became. And then, of course, I'm thinking, am I awake? Am I awake? Like, I must, like, I'm not awake. Like, I can't be awake. And so, but it's becoming clearer and clearer and clearer. And I'm pretty sure I'm awake because now I'm convincing myself I'm awake. And I'm sitting right up. And I'm nervous. And I have read something about this after. Because I was surprised that after that, I didn't get up, just turn on the lights or make everyone get up and sound Scream. the alarm. Yeah. And I was surprised I was able to go back to sleep because is there a person sitting on the back of my couch? Yeah. Even if I'm aware, I'm 100% sure it's a ghost. Uh, still, how could I sleep? I don't know. I've just read that people are nervous. I read this after. I didn't know this at the time. But somehow they're able to calm themselves and just... They're still, wor they're still worried. So ba basically what happened to me is I was nervous. I looked. I didn't really know what to do. I didn't have the fight or flight response that you would have if you actually thought it was a human or a danger. I wasn't peaceful, but I was just like, oh, I'm just going to go back to sleep now. 
and then I put oh went down. But I was laying there like my, and I didn't want to look again. And eventually I fell asleep. And the first thing I did in the morning was look on the back of the couch because I'm like, there. And I didn't know it was the back of the couch. Like I thought, I thought that's what it was, but I couldn't see clearly enough the couch. Just only this figure was the thing that came clear. But in my head, I woke up. I'm like, there it must be a table or somehow on the back of the couch. There must be like a pile of laundry that then yeah. I, that my brain made into this yeah. boy. And you know something. I looked exactly where I saw him. It's just the back of the couch. Nothing could be sitting on there, and there is nothing. Oh my gosh! So I am like, Ooh. And, you sure? oh, I like. I still remember like. So and I've had nightmares, and then realized I'm actually asleep. When I wake up, I know I was asleep. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I woke up and I'm like, I and I've never had sleep paralysis or any of this. So wow. pretty sure I was awake. That's creepy. That is so creepy. Right, but I would now never that sleep one, again. I'd never sleep in that room again. I'd be see, done. And you would think that I wouldn't, but there's something weird about you don't get the fight or flight. You get the fright. <laughs> but the, I don't know. I'm going to have to read about that again. I read a bit about it and I'm like, that is what I felt like seeing this, that this presence. Hodge. So spooky. Um, and I just don't know, because yeah, anyone that knows me, there's no way in poo that I would be normally going back to sleep. I've had nightmares, and I know okay. they're nightmares, and I can't go back to sleep. Yeah. But now I've seen this, I've seen Kodge, a ghost or a presence, and I go back to sleep. I don't even understand it. Yeah, that's, I would not be able to sleep. But like you said, if it's something that can happen, like. Yeah, and, and I can't remember, I should have asked. I'm pretty sure my brother Josh has seen him as well. I should oh, have should uh, gotten him that. for this episode. Mm-hmm. Mm. Maybe he'll have to. He can come on and describe all of his college experiences. Yes. Um. So there's the sleeping one, and then something that happened to me frequently. This is back in the day when you had CD players, and you had those, um, had these music clubs you could be part of, and you could order different CDs. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I and you know people. I don't know if my parents, my parents just didn't really, they were, they were up on the upper level. We were downstairs. We got to play our music really loudly, which was awesome. Like really loud and jump downstairs. on the bed, sing in our room, whatever. Um, but a lot of the time when people weren't home and you're playing your music loudly, I always had my bedroom door shut. Mm -hmm. I don't really know why, but I just always had it shut. I just think I felt cozy. Yep. And then I would blast my music. Even if people weren't home, I had my door shut. Um, and I remember just, it's so loud. Like, you can't hear anything. And the music is just blasting. I'm enjoying my songs. And I swear, every time I was home alone and I did that, certain amount of time, all of a sudden, knock, knock, knock on my door. And I'm remembering it. I think it's always three times, but it was always the same knock. And, it, and every time, I would be annoyed at first. Because, you know, I'm trying to listen to my music. Then I would think that someone came home and they're telling me to shut it. So I wasn't scared that... Like I, yeah. I was alone or some few times people were home, but if I was alone, I wasn't scared. I didn't think there was a murderer. I just thought it was my parents and my brother tell me to turn my music down. So yeah. always the first time I'd open my door annoyed, you know, like what? Uh, <laughs> Cause I'm a yeah. teenager. Uh, yeah. Not insulting to teenagers, but you know, I was, I was having my time. It was all about me at the time. Right. And everything's so, an inconvenience when you're a teenager. Yeah. Like, so what? And no one there. And then I'm like, so then of course I just think I didn't, it's so loud. Maybe I thought I heard a knock. Closed door. Last music. Same knock. Three times. Now I'm opening my door like, what the heck? Nothing there. And this happened more than once? All the time. But each, and each time I got more onto it. But like, at first you're not thinking. Like, I don't, even though we know the ghost is there, I didn't automatically think, oh no, it's him again. I was, every time I'm like, what? Because sometimes it was a person. Right, but oh. so many times it was not, and <laughs> and then the second time, and then I think I would try again because I really wanted to listen to my music. I don't want to, to stop really... playing my music, right? Must but eventually, like then the third or fourth time, I'm like, "Hey, I'll just turn my music off," and then no more knocking. What? Swear. Okay, I don't want to be in my basement anymore. <laughs> and it's kind of too bad it's not in the time. Of cell phones, because back then we didn't have that, because I would, 
absolutely be recorded because Record like just it. because like look i swear this is happening right and three knocks mm-hmm. and i tried to look that up and of course that's usually the knock premonition of death i, I keep reading but like no one died like that's not it was it's far too frequent for it to be premonition of death he was just tired of your music you were disturbing him probably he didn't like the sign ace of bass i love that album that was a popular one or um salt and pep um no yeah salt and pepper shoop mm, yeah. shoop i love that song i put that song on all no, the was time that, salt, that was salt yeah. and pepper yeah and yeah. tlc Very waterfalls because uh... on the block like he was having none of it uh so that happened a lot um and then there's just two more that i'll bore you with um you're not boring these are great you should write a book you could, write, you could write like a whole story about this you could make up a whole well like, yeah and family based on your family like based on true events kind of shit Ooh, it's the new Ooh. movie no one steal this he copyright could... copyright <laughs> he could be a murderer oh no but you could no. totally make that like a stephen king creepy oh no stephen maybe. king creepy maybe i'll no, do too it. creepy that's that would be flight Ooh, fight I or love, flight i love this was just fright i actually have like a bunch of notes on like um different kind of ghosts and demons and stuff for a book idea so maybe i'll just like take a couple of your ideas for the creepiness factor sure for the creepy creepy Gosh. Josh. Oh my god. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Um so we had a dog named Fergie, named after because she had red hair. Fergie, Fergie you know Sarah Ferguson. Oh, don't laugh. If I ever get a dog, I'm gonna name him Fergus. Oh not a cute a dog cute name. name so it? this was a little lab uh, a mixture of a corgi, a Sheltie, and a Labrador retriever, but mostly yeah, looked like a legs. corgi. Little tiny legs. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. I need to see a picture of him. Her. I will have to post. Oh my god. Of... Oh, hello, dogs that live here now. Two more stories, and then Fiona's going to tell us about the Halifax ghosts. Yes, no, keep going. So Fergie was very much my dad's dog. Like, it was our whole family, but really loved my dad. And went everywhere with him. Everywhere. Um, and so my dad mostly was upstairs. Because we are, in, you know, the bedroom downstairs. And Fergie would not come downstairs with the children, me and my brothers, ever. Like, we we wanted her to come hang with us. Of but course, yeah. No. She'd hang with us upstairs. She'd go in the car with us. But no, downstairs, never. Unless we had food. Then she would follow us. So one time, I was eating in my bedroom. I can't remember what it was. But of course, Fergie followed me down. And I remember I closed my door. So I was sitting on my bed, eating them. She was sitting there waiting for some. I don't know if I shared. Um, when I was finished, immediately, like as soon as you're finished, like she wants nothing to do with me. She gets off my bed and no, she doesn't sit. Oh, excuse me. This is part of the story. She didn't jump on beds. She would play with soccer balls and stuff like that, but she didn't. And I think she would get on the couch by herself, but she didn't want to hang with me. So she wasn't being comfortable and sitting on my bed. She was on the floor. She would never go on my bed. Because, I mean, maybe that would, you know, make her want to get comfortable and stay down there, heaven forbid, right? Yeah, yeah. So she's on the floor, sitting in front of me, waiting. As soon as I'm done, literally not even done chewing, she's at the door like, open it, open it. I would like to leave now. So I open it. And remember down the hall, straight down the hall is my brother's room. And then in between my room and their room are the stairs to go upstairs closer to his, my brother's room. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. On the left hand side. So I open my door. She starts running towards the stairs because like she's leaving. And this is what she did every time. She'd normally yep. open the door boom, all the way upstairs. Done. Yeah. Heads down the hall. Freezes. Looks at my brother's room. Wants to go upstairs so badly she puts her little paw up on the bottom step. But is still looking at my brother's room. And then runs. And my I have the door open the whole time because I'm watching her going, what are you doing? Bee lines it back for my room and jumps on my bed and lays down. What? So I just... 
Okay, now I'm in that, like, I have that same feeling, like, I'm just going to close my door now. Yeah. Right? Like, that same not not frightened. Yeah. Not in a panic, but I should probably close my door now. So, yeah. Oh, and how long did she stay in there with you? I can't remember that, but I know there was a second attempt. So I don't know if she then, once I closed the door, she was like, wait, you know, I think I'm going to get trapped in here. Tried again. <laughs> Wouldn't go up. And ran back down and came back in. So I had to close oh the door again. Oh my gosh. I am never going to your mom's house again. But then she really didn't want to stay in there. So the next time I opened the door, she ran like beelined it upstairs. But like, so now a dog is, there's something going on there. And your brothers weren't home. No. The lights were all off. It's black and they were like, their light was off and stuff. Wow. Yeah. That's creepy. So AF, creepy. isn't it? Creepy AF. Oh yeah. Okay, and just one more. Like there's so many, but this this one's um these are good. They're and there's so many, and they're like years. Like I can't remember the order. We just this and I'm not the only one. Like everyone has their own experiences. So um this is why I'm like, how would this all be explained away? Like what is going on? Mm-hmm. Right? Um, but so back in the day. I mean, I mostly only had myself to worry about and, you know, we did stuff around the house, but you just had the one area of the house that you had to keep clean. So my mm -hmm. room was the only one that, that like, that was mine, right? Mm -hmm. So in my ideal house room anywhere is very, very, very decluttered and very tidy and organized, which you wouldn't know, knowing me, but that's because that's a standard I can no longer uphold. Right. So it's just like, why bother? Yeah. But my brain likes it like that. And so as a teenager, when it was just my room, so organized and so decluttered that I could tell my brothers hated it. And I always had my, my door closed. And I didn't care if it, my brother was like, I didn't have that relationship. Like, ew, brothers oh, stay away. But I just, yeah. I just had it organized. And I didn't want people touching my stuff because it was I knew where everything was. And, you know, just, I mm -hmm. guess, a little anal. Mm -hmm. So I always had my room closed. Like, don't go in my room. Right. Because don't touch my stuff. You'll disturb so, my shit. Yeah. 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 And so they knew, like, one time someone went in there, they moved my hairspray just a little bit. And I could tell. And they were like, how the hell did you know I was in here? Wow. I'm like, in my hairspray. And, you know, maybe I have some issues. But, yeah. I don't anymore. Because that's impossible <laughs> well, to uphold. Because you've, you've been a mother of three children and... It's yeah. just not but deep down that's really i really do want things like that but it's not happening so i'm able to relax but uh so they didn't go in my room but i remember coming home one night and and i always i was a creature of habit lock turn off light lock bedroom door not lock, <laughs> close bedroom close, door yep. leave right i'm human sometimes i forget things but I pull into the driveway. My bedroom light is on. I immediately, I'm like, who the F is in my room? Like, I'm so, so, so my friend has dropped me off and I'm getting out of the car, basically going, who was in my room? Like, I'm, I'm, kill I'm somebody. annoyed. Yeah. Yeah. Why are they? In, and also, really, why are they in there? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I open the door, you know, and I, and I'm ready to just, you know, say. Tear into them. But I see my brother and his friend at the bottom of the stairs looking at my bedroom down the hall going like, and their eyes are wide open and they're just no. staring at it. And I'm like, uh, so I go from like, oh, what, like what is happening? And they're just staring. So I run down the bottom of the steps and look. Oh no. I remember, excuse me. As I get out of the car, the lights on, it goes off. So now I'm on to them. I'm like, Oh, they hear me home. Those little farts. I know you were in there. Right. Yeah. yeah. They turn off the light and get running away. Right. Yeah. So I see them at the bottom of the stairs, which would tell me they did just run away, but they're facing the wrong way and they're frozen in fear. And then, oh, so I don't, goodness. yeah, I'm like, what is happening? And they're just like looking. And then I go down. This is when I go down, look. And now the light's on again. <gasps> no. And then it's off again. And then it's on again. Stop it! And I don't remember, like, if it, how many times. And so 
I'm like, you weren't in my room, were you? And they're like, no. But I, and I don't know if they were just going up to get a snack and saw out of the corner of their eye, you know, that my light was on or off, or whatever, but they didn't go in my room. And I saw the light going on and off just in my room. Oh my God. Isn't that creepy? Did you go in your room? Yeah, I went in my room because then I figured I knew it was Kaj. And you weren't scared? I'd never sleep in that room again. I would be such no, a but again, chance. I'm telling you, there's this weird feeling like yeah, scared because weird and creepy. Your light is flicking on and off. Yeah, but I know it's him at this point because of all the things. And he hasn't done anything to harm us. Like I said, sometimes we just have that feeling like I'm just going to leave now. But oh so I don't remember if I went in and then just did leave the room for a bit, but I can't remember. But I just I wasn't scared to go in my room just to make sure nothing was actually in there. Nothing was right. And then but I just know it was him It was the same kind of stuff that kept happening. Right. So. So yeah. I went from pure like I was in my room to oh, man, like that was a new one. I That, that didn't happen again. I'd be but. like sage in the shit out of my room. Like be burning everything, burn it all. I wonder if he was only like I don't know why he went down there. Sometimes like Josh used to be in the room right next to it, so I don't know if it's because I I I feel he's connected to Josh somehow, um, or if it's because Josh was there looking down, like I, or, or if he's just downstairs, you know, um. But but I did have some experiences without Josh there, like like the couch thing. Although I don't know if that was related to him, because again I don't know what that has to do with the fifteen to seventeen year old boy, the cigar smell, um. But most of my experiences, if Josh wasn't home, were downstairs. Um, the other experience upstairs was Josh was upstairs, though. Remember, he was the only one up there when everything fell. So, yeah. It's... Yeah, your mom's house is creepy. <laughs> Hopefully she won't listen to this episode. <laughs> Sorry, well, she Mom. Knows it, so if you just try not to talk about it. Gosh. I, I couldn't even... So I'm going to tell some local ghost stories, local ghost stories that I did find on the internet here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. They do offer ghost tours. Um, we can post that somewhere uh, with the information on that. But the one that I found was, so Five Fishermen is a restaurant um, on the Halifax waterfront. So apparently before it became a restaurant, it was actually a funeral home which housed thousands of bodies from two tragedies, the sinking of the Titanic in 1912 and the Halifax explosion in 1917. Of course, we spoke a little bit of the sinking of the Titanic in our first episode. Um, the, Halifax uh, the Halifax explosion, for anybody who doesn't know, um, happened on December 6, 1917, here in Halifax, when the French cargo ship SS Mont Blanc collided with the Norwegian vessel SS Emo. Uh, the Mont Blanc was carrying a lot of high explosives, which caught on fire and exploded, devastating the port of Halifax. 1,782 people were killed in Halifax and Dartmouth by the blast, debris, and fires, and it's estimated that 9,000 people were injured. It was the largest human-made explosion at the time. So in this restaurant... Uh, keep in mind how many bodies would have been kept there. Um, there's been reports of glasses flying off shelves, set cutlery on tables being moved or knocked on the floor, and even taps being turned on by themselves. There's a report from a waitress working late one night, and as she was walking towards the maitre d' stand, is that how you say it, maitre d'? Mm -hmm. um, she saw a gray fog-like apparition moving down the staircase. Uh, many staff members have reported walking through cold pockets of air, even on warm nights, and it wasn't Ooh. uncommon to hear voices, especially your name being called out. Interesting. Uh, a waiter passed the private room called the captain's quarters and heard a man and a woman arguing. And as he walked into the room to investigate, investigate the voices stopped and it was empty, even though he had entered in the only entrance and exit to the room. Wow. I know. Creepy. Uh, so then there is uh, the Citadel Hill, of course. It's a National Historic Site uh, here in Canada, and it's literally right over the harbor from us. There's been um, many ghost sightings documented over there. 
It was uh, once a British fort that held prisoners as well as kept watch over the city of Halifax. And the last one I have in Grand Parade Square, in the heart of downtown Halifax, stands the oldest building in Halifax. I've been saying Halifax a lot. Um, St. Paul's <laughs> Anglican Church. Goes without saying um, that the oldest building, of course, would also be haunted. But legend has it that on the morning of the Halifax explosion, a deacon was standing in front of the window gazing out over the, hel- the harbor just before the blast. Like so many others, he did not survive. And the intense light and the heat from the explosion caused his profile to be forever etched on the glass, leaving his shadow behind for years to come. And I looked at the pictures and that's crazy. I know that's part of the the ghost hunt so we'll definitely say. have to share that picture maybe on our instagram we'll pop that up there mm-hmm. and we'll show a picture of halifax harbor and maybe of citadel hill too mm-hmm. so. yeah lots of lots of halifax pictures that's what we got that's it that's it for today yeah thanks for listening to the T show your turn are you reading the right one no i just made it up <laughs> Rad living. <laughs> well, you you put you did a call to duty where you said if you have any ghost stories, so now you have to do oh, it again. Yeah, I, mean, I even wrote the script. And I know you them. really did. You suck. Oh my! <laughs> that's the best. That's the best outro ever. Rewind. Yeah. Okay. So this is what I wrote. Thanks for listening to the F and T show. If you like the show, please tell your friends, family, and anyone who will listen. Leave a review, preferably five stars, on your favorite podcast platform. And if you have any experiences with ghosts, please send us an email or contact us via social media. The email is fnterinshow at gmail.com. So F-N-T-E-R-Y-N-N-S-H-O-W at Mm gmail.com. And remember, we're all on Team Human. Be smart and shit. Be the tortoise. You have more choices than you think, and there could be a Casper in your life. Love it. We did it. Go, leave. Got less than one minute to go. Whoop, whoop. And it's game four Leafs versus Tampa. Leafs are up in the series two to one. And I got my Marner shirt on. Woo! Go, Marner. Go, Marner. And we're going to run out of time. So, and good night, oh, Codge. Good. <laughs> Not good night, Codge. Stay where you are. All right. And floaty things. Text me later. No hey, floaty bye. things. Bye. Bye.